Hello and welcome to our webinar. Thank you for taking uh, the time to going use today. I am Saeed Al Habsi, committee member at RIIRSM Oman branch. First of all, we hope to give a brief of International Institute of Risk and Safety Management (IIRSM) is a professional membership organization for those responsible for managing risk in all their forms. Head office in United Kingdom. Our Oman branch, we are four members. Branch here, uh, Ms. Ashwaq Arrawahi, Training Manager, Ms. Fawaz, Ms. Fawaz Saleh, and Mr. Dorley. Our branch here, she attend Global HSC. Please visit our stand number 32 at Oman Convention and Exhibition Center. We hope to aware people in risk management. Our webinar topic today, Occupational Health Hazard and Risk. Gentle thanks to our speaker, Dr. Zakiya Al-Bahri, Family Medicine Specialist. Dr. Zakiya, you can go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Saeed. Thank you, Ms. Julie. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Dr. Zakiya Al-Bahri. I'm a Family Medicine Specialist, and I'm interested in health and safety. That's why I went for occupational health and safety specialization. Uh, I wanted to become an auditor and also to deal with field-related health issues. Uh, regarding this topic, occupational health hazards and risks, uh, in fact, we cannot cover all aspects of this topic. Uh, so I concentrated on certain points. Um, and if you have question, you can ask at, at the end or you can uh, visit the references I will put at the end of my presentation. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I will start with definitions. So all of us can be familiar with the uh, words and terms we are using in this presentation. Uh, occupational. What is occupational? In fact, it is related to a job or an occupation or or a profession and uh, what about vocational and what is the difference between occupational and vocational vocational uh, means it is related to skills of a particular profession of, of a particular job this is the difference between occupation and vocation uh, what about the term hazard Hazard means uh, it is a chance or probability to put at risk. Uh, what about risk itself? Uh, it, it is a result of a hazard and exposed to danger. Uh, another term is uh, health. It, uh, the term health doesn't mean only the absence of a disease. Actually, it's a state of a complete physical, mental, uh, and social well-being to make yourself uh, comfortable at life. Uh, well-being, the term well-being, also we can uh, define it by saying it is a state of being healthy, happy and comfortable uh, another term we will use here it is biopsychosocial uh, uh, this term concerns with the uh, interaction between biological or genetic psychosocial and psychological aspects and psycho uh, and socio-economic aspects of life Another term we will use here is ergonomics. Anyone can define ergonomics? Okay. Uh, it's a new science, actually. Uh, and it is studying the relationship between the worker, the task work he's doing, and the environment in his work. 
and it is mainly uh, concentrating to fit the machine to the human, not the opposite. Okay? For health, of course, we need to know a little bit about the systems in the human body. Regarding the digestive system, it is a continuous tract starting from the mouth till the anus, and it has four uh, functions. The first one is ingestion, then digestion, absorption, then excretion of the food stuff. All this system I am mentioning in the body, it is of course uh, can be affected uh, by the hazards in the, uh, at the workplace. Muscular system or musculoskeletal, usually we are talking about musculoskeletal because they are related, consist of muscles and bones, ligaments, tendon. What's the difference between tendons and ligaments? Tendons, they are uh, hard fibers that connect the muscles to the skeleton. And ligaments connect uh, bones to each other. Okay? And uh, the function of these uh, systems is to maintain the posture of the body and help in moving the limbs and the body parts. The skin organ, uh, as you know, it is the largest organ in the body. And it is about 1.7 square meter and its weight uh, six to eight kilograms. Why we are mentioning skin here? It is uh, a protective barrier and also it has uh, the function of absorption. So if any chemicals uh, comes along the skin part, the body will be affected, not only locally, but maybe systematically. Lymphatic system, it has uh, to do with the immune system also. It is a network of vessels that are uh, that runs along side the uh, circulatory system. Uh, we'll talk now about respiratory system. Uh, it consists of upper respiratory tract and the lungs, and of course, its main function is to uh, give oxygenation to the bloodstream. Uh, the, circulatory, the circulatory system consists of the heart, blood vessels, and the blood. And of course, its main function is to give oxygenation and chemicals that are essential to life. Any question about this? No questions yet. Okay. Now we'll go to the occupational uh, health hazards and risks. Uh, some topics that I will concentrate to have uh, to have a look at them, to uh, decide the control management about them. The first one is the musculoskeletal injuries, and of course it is related to the musculoskeletal system that I mentioned before. Uh, what health issues can be affected in this system? Uh, strain could happen, tendonitis, sprain, uh, fractures, of course, uh, the things that is common uh, nowadays is uh, chronic back pain, 
arthritis, chronic soft tissue injuries and sprains, also uh, repetitive strain disorder from re uh, doing repetitive uh, work task, also eye strain could happen. And uh, the things that may result in these injuries from work uh, due to production line work, uh, display screen equipment, uh, manual handling, uh, repeated task, uh, wrong posture, uh, twisting, uh, uncomfortable uh, equipment design, uh, also uh, the insufficient environmental factors like uh, insufficient lightning uh, also these injuries could have been uh, from uh, the individual capabilities that is not enough uh, to do the task that is asked to do uh, how can we manage uh, these injuries uh, of course, prevention is better than cure. So we should run risk assessment. And you will find uh, this phrase in all control management that I will mention. It is very, very important. Uh, in this matter, we should uh, look at the load, the task, the force, equipment, environment, and the individual capabilities. So think light means L stands for load, I for individual capabilities, T for the task, and E for equipment and environment. Uh, in this uh, assessment, we can use simple filters or we can use the UK's HSC assessment tools like MAC, manual, assessment chart, manual handling assessment chart, or variable MAC, or uh, the assessment of uh, repetitive task, and other tools we can, you can look at in the internet. If we can eliminate the hazard, it will be great. And we can do that by automation or mechanization, i.e. by using machines instead of the uh, individ individual himself doing the task. Also, we can redesign the workplace to maintain good posture, and we need to do good work practices. This, is, this needs uh, this thing is needed to maintain the posture and the technique uh, and training is needed for that. Uh, also, if the lighting or the temperature or the furniture in the workplace is not uh, sufficient, we can improve that. For repetitive and uh, to avoid fatigue and stress, uh, job rotation can be done. And also giving enough breaks, rest breaks. Uh, another thing in managing the, this issue is by doing medical checkup. For example, uh, three monthly or six monthly, we can do eyesight testing especially for the one who are using the display screen equipment. We can check their BP, uh, blood sugar, and other things. Uh, for, uh, of course, in big industries, they can use wearable technologies like smart watches or exoskeletal suits. Another health hazard is noise, and this is uh, very common. 
first of all, I want to talk about the normal uh, hearing and uh, the normal sound intensity. Uh, the normal hearing frequency range for any human ranges from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And the sound intensity range uh, from zero decibel, which is the threshold of hearing, to 130 decibel, which is the threshold of feeling pain from the sound. There are few health problems that uh, result from noise, but sometimes uh, it can result to be, uh, it can result in hearing loss. One of them is conductive, but this is not very common in the occupational health. Uh, another thing is sensorineural or sudden deafness. Uh, another health issue is tinnitus, which means a continuous ringing in the air. Uh, other problems could uh, happen, uh, which is temporary or permanent threshold shift, acute or chronic noise-induced hearing impairment. And there is another issue, which is age-related presbycosis hearing loss. These problems could result from level of noise, duration of exposure, or very loud noise. Also, head physical injuries could lead to these health issues in the ear. What control measures we can do? As I mentioned, risk assessment is very important in each group. We can use the noise survey form in this matter. Uh, also, we can use instrumentation to take sound level and to measure sound level. For example, simple sound level meter, uh, integrating sound level meter, or personal sound exposure meter. The simple sound level meter, it is used for routine spot checks. And the integrating sound level meter, it is used to calculate the average noise level over a period of time. The personal sound exposure meter from its name, it is connected to the person near his ear in order to measure the total noise dose over the whole working hours. To control the noise, uh, we can reduce the noise at its source by eliminating or avoiding the noisy activities or equipment. There is a policy called adopting noise avoidance purchasing policy. Uh, any uh, company can use this policy uh, in order to reduce the uh, noise at work. Another uh, issue also we can uh, reduce the transmission of the noise by using anti-vibration mounts, barriers, enclosures, or by simply increasing the distance between the noise source and the worker, if it is possible. Uh, if it is not possible, of course, using hearing protection, like shelters, uh, earplugs, earmuffs. Uh, and there is an issue of overprotection because uh, it may result in communication difficulties and also in warning sig uh, signals that use the hearing. Uh, another control measure we can use in this uh, problem is by doing uh, audiometry 
which is a part of health surveillance to those workers. Another occupational health problem is vibration. We have two types of uh, syndromes, which is hand arm vibration and whole body vibration. The hand arm vibration or vibration induced white finger, as you can see in the picture, uh, results from uh, manual repetitive uh, uh, or using uh, vibrated equipment. Of course, the engineers knows this better than me. It can result in uh, the this syndrome causing numbness, causing joint stiffness, bone stiffness, and uh, if uh, larger uh, machines are used and it is vibrating, of course, uh, this results in whole body vibration, causing back pain, vertigo, circulatory disorder or respiratory disorder with difficulty in breathing, palpitation, and other symptoms. How can this health issue result? It depends on many factors, actually. The vibration mag magnitude, frequency and direction of the vibration, also the duration of exposure. Uh, regarding the control measures, we can, of course, use the risk assessment, the vibration risk assessment. Uh, if it is possible, we can use mechanization for elimination of the exposure using remote controlled equipment rather than direct handling. Also by maintaining, well maintaining the equipment. It is very, very important to maintain the equipment regularly. Uh, there is uh, one form or technique you can use, which is called eight hour energy equivalent vibration magnitude exposure. This technique is used to compare the uh, exposure to the exposure time to the vibration. And if it, it reaches the level, a certain level, they have to stop. Also, they can do job rotation, uh, training, the supervision should be there in order to uh, prevent these health issues. Workers also, they should be provided with personal protective equipment. Uh, wearable technologies also could be used, especially in uh, sophisticated companies like fitness devices, base makers, and uh, health surveillance is very important at least uh, once a year uh, by doing vascular blood flow test, uh, sensor and neural test, uh, also the during risk assessment we can use uh, some calculators or ready recorder for uh, hand arm vibration. Any questions so far? Is it clear? Okay. Uh, another health hazard is the using of biological agents or the exposure to these agents. Uh, 
uh, one of these are microorganisms like viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasites, which, which can be present in the material that they are using during the work task or in the air. Uh, another source is zoonosis uh, for the one who are dealing with animals. Uh, another agent uh, are the vector-borne insects like mosquitoes or mites. Uh, for viruses, bacteria, so many uh, diseases can result from exposing to those. For example, AIDS, uh, Ligonella, Leptospirosa, Leptospirosis, Hepatitis, uh, Chickenpox. Uh, examples of exposing to animals with problems is, is uh, Cryptosporidosis and uh, Cytokosis and uh, vector-borne insects diseases. As you know, malaria is very common, dengue fever, yellow fever, toxoplasmosis, amoebiasis. Uh, the problem with this agent that it can cause, of course, infections. Also, it can cause allergy, toxicity, leading to death. The problem with these agents is that they are having incubation period, which means that till the symptoms uh, appears to the person, there is some time delay from the, the infection time, the contact with the uh, organism, till the appearance of the symptoms. Also, it's rapid mutation. It changes itself all the time. It is very infectious from animal to human or from human to human. Also, another problem is it's rapid multiplication and causing certain disorders. For co controlling this issue, uh, as I said, risk assessment is very important in order to prevent these issues, uh, safe working environments at workplace is very important by avoiding exposure, disinfection, decontamination programs, uh, also safe collection, storage, disposal of waste, uh, putting warning signals and signs, uh, wearing uh, appropriate PPE. Also, uh, personal hygiene should be enforced and welfare services should be provided. Another issue is to encourage the workers for immunization and vaccination. <clears throat> uh, regular training is very important in handling the things. Uh, also, when there is uh, an outbreak, it should be reported and recorded in order to reach, uh, to solve the uh, root problem in this issue. Uh, biological monitoring also is there. Uh, health surveillance for the workers should be done. And also, uh, you can uh, consult specialists uh, in this matter. Another health uh, hazard is the exposure to chemical or industrial agents like mercury, asbestos, lead, and other chemicals. What health issues these agents can cause. It can cause acute toxicity, skin corrosion, eye damage, allergy, 
also some chemicals can lead to germ cell mutation other agents can lead to cancer uh, it can affect the reproduction system causing infertility or sexual dysfunction some of these agents if the worker is not wearing appropriate PPE can aspirate those agents for example legonella in the wet soil uh, also some agents can cause target organ toxicity for example some insecticides that are used in the plants agriculture it can cause uh, liver toxic toxicity leading to cancer and death uh, what control measure we can use and adopt in this issue we can use uk reach which, which stands for registration evaluation authorization and restriction of chemicals regulation also by doing uh, appropriate labeling and safety data sheets to these chemicals putting health hazard samples risk assessment is very important and during the risk assessment we can do sampling and uh, use stain tube detector for the airborne uh, chemicals health surveillance also is very important and uh, the usually the hierarchy of controls that is used usually in this matter is elimination substitution good work design uh, good installation of the process total enclosure of the chemicals doing some uh, engineering controls like ventilation uh, training uh, uh, also supervising the workers uh, by uh, during the task and uh, asking them to appropriately put their PPE Another issue is uh, to control the number of workers at the task. Uh, also, the industries that they are using the radiation, uh, some health issue results from this. Uh, in radiation, we have ionizing and non-ionizing types. Uh, the ionizing could be alpha, beta, neutrons, X-rays, gamma rays. The non-ionizing are the electromagnetic waves, uh, like optical and fields, like radio frequency, microwaves, radio waves. Uh, some health issue can result from uh, overexposure to this. Some are acute and some are chronic. Uh, the acute disorder, we name it as acute radiation sickness or syndrome. And uh, the late illness or the chronic illness can result in uh, infertility or sterility and some genetic uh, defects uh, in controlling this health problem uh, we should do also risk assessment to monitor uh, do safe work system uh, implement engineering controls like putting enclosures uh, screen non-reflective uh, services, putting shields, uh, put uh, proper ventilation, keep distance, 
and control the time of exposure to those radiation. Uh, other control measure, like the administrative uh, controls, uh, by using uh, warning signals and doing proper training. Also, in certain areas, uh, the workers should uh, wear their PPE. Here comes also the health surveillance, which is, which is very important in this matter. Even the control of uh, cell phones is very important because it has some certain of radiation. Uh, another health issue uh, is the environment of the uh, workplace. So if the temperature or humidity uh, is in in their extremes it means it will affect the worker also and the uh, work task uh, here the consideration is about the air temperature the radiant temperature the radiation that comes the rays from the sun sun rays and the wind spree, uh, speed uh, of course, the clothing of the, the, the they put the worker they put the duration of exposure, the intensity of the work, also the body metabolic rate, the sweat rate, are factors that may result in health issues relating to thermal environment. Uh, what health problems can result in this? From this is uh, heat reg uh, related to heat or cold. Heat stress could result leading to heat stroke and may result in death. Uh, cold injuries uh, such as frost nib, frost bites, and hypothermia, which is the uh, minor aspect of cold injuries. How can we control uh, this health issue? Uh, the main thing is to prevent. We can do risk assessment. Uh, in this matter, we can use the wet bulb globe temperature index. Uh, some uh, industries can use this. Also by uh, redesigning the workplace doing work rotation, uh, having some barriers, uh, controlling the heat or the cold by uh, putting insulation, uh, also engineering control by uh, putting proper ventilation, humidifiers or heaters. Uh, in this extreme temperature also, the manager should provide uh, drinks, provide uh, good clothing and PPE, uh, do proper training, uh, supervise the workers, and of course do health surveillance for them. Uh, I collected these problems here because if we talk about each one, we, we need uh, at least a week. So I collected these problems, uh, stress, fatigue, anxiety, mental health, disabled workers, uh, ladies, uh, loan working, shift working, violence at work because uh, they have almost the same control uh, measures and management we can use. Uh, of course, risk assessment by using pre-placement health assessment, monitoring of the biopsychosocial aspects for the workers, uh, 
doing ergonomic work design, uh, implementing safe work environment, uh, give the workers proper training, proper supervision, uh, give them enough rest breaks, and of course, provide, provide them with proper PPE. Uh, for uh, certain uh, workers, uh, communication, proper communication with them is very important. Uh, manage their short and long term absence. Uh, do reha really, reha really, ha sorry, rehabilitation for them. Uh, do health uh, surveillance. Uh, put uh, policy for them for drug or alcohol. Uh, treat them uh, by providing primary health care. Uh, provide them with occupational therapists. Uh, for disabled people, uh, put proper access to work, welfare facilities, uh, fit to work services. And also, uh, some initiatives can be provided to them in order to relieve some stress and uh, give them a comfortable workplace uh, by easy access or free access to medical support, uh, do medical screening, give them financial education, uh, physiotherapy, you can provide them with free gym if it is possible. Uh, physiotherapy, uh, they should work with partners also and uh, control the uh, bullying. This is more for uh, safety issue. So uh, fire, electricity, mechanical risk also can result in injuries or may lead to death. That's why we need policy and procedures for he health and safety in each institution. Regular risk assessments should be done. Uh, you should keep and maintain safe system of work have system for emergency and first aid, do proper training for the workers, and uh, proper supervision also is required. Any questions so far? No questions. I almost uh, finished my presentation. Here are the references I used, the HSC guidelines, Nebosch website, and the occupational safety and health regulations in the Sultanate of Oman. And thank you for listening. Thank you. Gentle thanks to, gentle Sorry, thanks to Dr. <laughs> Zakiya al Bahri, family medicine specialist. Thank you for taking the time to go in yours today. We hope to see you again in our next webinar. Thank you. I just have one question that's come in. What is the benefit of the gym for pregnant women? Uh, it's a relief for them, like having rest uh, breaks. Uh, also, uh, it helps them to maintain their uh, muscles power in order to continue working. Thank you. That's the only question, but we've had some very good feedback. Thank you. Very useful and informative webinar. And thank you for, for the presentation. So I'd like to thank you as well. It was a really interesting presentation. I'd like thank to wish you everyone very a much. Thank you I'd for like giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much.
You're more welcome. And I'd like to wish everyone a good evening and to let you know that the presentation will be uploaded onto the YouTube channel within the next couple of days. Good evening, everyone.